It's always a good time to avoid the hustle and bustle at the grocery store, not to mention the crowds. HelloFresh delivers everything you need to get dinner on the table directly to your door, contact free. Go to HelloFresh.com slash footballers12 and use the code footballers12 for 12 free meals, including free shipping. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. You don't want that hustle, and you definitely don't want the bustle. The bustle is dangerous. What is the bustle? Uh, that is. I know what the hustle is. The hustle is is quick movement. The bustle, I think, is thorn related on oh, a really? bus. Hmm. I'm not sure. Is that, I, is that, is that real like a, or is that a He's trying to no, like that a was, thistle joke? Yeah, I was going for oh, some kind of thistle in a Do we bus. have to restart the show? Oh, man. What? That's not <laughs> I assume bustle is like people... Uh, oh, there, thank you. Like in New York City, right? Uh-huh. And you're on the... They're bustling everywhere. Well, you're walking around on the street and you're rubbing shoulders with people. Is that the bustle that you're trying to avoid at the supermarket? Brooks, help me here. I don't know, man. You don't know. <laughs> Al, you're a man of the people. It's like when you're yeah. on the on the dance floor. You know, don't just stand there. I'm really sorry, Jason. Bust, Here, here's a, a move. I'm really sorry, Jason. They, thank you. Here's a here's a nice definition online to be bustly astir. <laughs> Wait, that's the definition. That's the defin- Can I get a right, definition on the definition, please? All right, please? here we go. Here's a better one. To move briskly and often ostentatiously bustled around the kitchen. That's th- this okay. is Google. This is not me. You cannot blame me for this. So we're, we're ostentatious now. Yeah, with our bustling. I apologize we for inquiring. Sophisticated. Tuesday, March thirtieth, the fantasy footballers Jason Moore, Mike, the fantasy hitman, right? I'm Andy Holloway. Free agency winners and losers show today. Oh baby, and some trades. Yeah, there's some trades we have to talk about in our news segment. And breaking out the Dynasty download today, this off-season as we get ready for 2021. Well, it's not off-season for Dynasty Leagues, right? It's just always. Yeah. I mean, well. This is near prime season. What do you call it? Season? (laughs) I mean, honestly. It's it's, in season and season? Yeah, it's the 2021 season. Like, it it begins as soon as the other one ends. I do feel like this is Dynasty season. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. So we have Dynasty Download on the show today. And uh, Mike broke out a new drop for us. So oh, man, did I? Uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers, thefantasyfootballers.com's the website. Jointhefoot.com is our community of patrons supporting the show. If you are looking to get into a league, I have seen many folks come out over the last couple of weeks and they have been very thankful that they found FootClanLeagues.com, which is one of the perks of supporting the show. You get like-minded, fantasy-crazy people that want to be in leagues together and be active and make trades and actually participate. And, you know, it, it's fun to win a league where the other 11 people don't play. There but is, it's really not. <laughs> there is a lot of bustling in, in those forums. Yes, which you might not have in your home leagues. So... You can check that out at jointhefoot.com. And let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Just goes to show it's uh, all of human history. Still no thistle jokes that have landed. Mm, that's right. They've I never don't actually. Think... I'll get one. Uh, <laughs> well, we know <laughs> Al Borland really enjoyed. Because he knows. He knows I will not give up. Yeah, unfortunately. All right, well, uh, NFL owners anticipating what we've been anticipating, a 17-game season for the NFL. This means if you adjust your league to kind of match the what I would say we'll recommend and everybody will be doing, you're going to have a 14-week regular season for the first time in history. And um, by weeks to deal with, maybe in a different fashion, and then you're also going to be looking at benchmarks for players in a whole new light. I mean, we're going yeah. to be redefining what a good season is. We being media, me, 
those that you're listening to talking about seasons. A thousand yards is not a thousand yards. And you know, in in addition to that, uh, you we finally become week seventeeners ourselves. Our championship week will be in week seventeen. We've always we've always looked down upon week seventeeners, and now we have joined them. If you were a week seventeener, just stay just the same. Stay right there. Yeah, don't adjust anything. Big trades. Big, big trades. And I'm glad that these happen now, to be honest with you. It's going to make it easier for us. to. We're going to be breaking down rookies. Uh, yeah. We're going to be talking about the draft. And um, if we make a bunch of predictions and then draft day trades happen, it doesn't help anybody. But they happened ahead of time. The 49ers received the number three overall pick. All they had to do was give up the number 12 overall pick. A third rounder this year and first round picks in 2022 and 2023. All in. All in, baby. All the in or on are insert in. name here because we don't but, know. But which one? Definitively whether this will be. Yeah, handicap it right now. Where where are you at with the number three pick? What quarterback do you believe? Oh, man. You've got to bet your house on something today, Mike. That name is, <laughs> is who? Well, so – the 49ers, if you haven't been paying attention, are throwing smoke bombs and smoke screens everywhere because it was what what is out there in the media right now, at least, and, and maybe the Jets are smoke screening as well. Everyone, everyone is throwing excessive smoke bombs. But what we believe today is Zach Wilson will be the number two pick. So that leaves of the uh, of the first round quarterbacks left. You have Justin Fields, Trey Lance. And uh, Mac Mac Jones. Jones. and Mac Jones. Now here's where the 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 sleight of hand is happening, because I would think it would be Justin Fields. I still think that Justin Fields is the second best quarterback in this draft, and we've we've heard him linked to the you know the number three pick. But now the 49ers were uh, going to attend a pro day, except Justin Fields' pro day fell on the exact same pro day as Mac Jones. And well, you Kyle, can't be two places at you once. Cannot be, you cannot be. Well, you can send some representatives for you from your team, except they are sending the big dogs. They're sending Kyle Shanahan and and General Manager Lynch to the Mac Jones Pro Day. But is this simply a tactic to throw people off the the scent that they do not want uh, it the the number two pick to end up being Justin Fields? All right, so make your pick. Who do you believe that the San Francisco 49ers will pick at number three? Justin Fields. Andy, Mac Jones. I am Justin Fields. I still think it's I'm not happen. falling for it. Not falling for it, Shanahan. I was trying to find the angle because I was like, well, what what advantage are they gaining? But what you're saying is right about not wanting to. They're not what? not wanting another team to trade with the Jets, right? And go take Justin Fields at number two. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I I'm gonna stick with. I I think Mac Jones is. It's too obvious. What, what's That's in, the problem. What's interesting is, look at last week. You had mock drafts that you made fun of here on this show. Yes, doo-doo That box. had Justin Fields dropping to nine. Those look better now. And what, <laughs> <laughs> look, uh, here's what is so... I'm not going to say... The word's not hypocritical. I don't even know what it is. Inconsistent, annoying. Every year, it's consensus, consensus, consensus. The consensus, right, that has Paxton Lynch in the first round and Dak in the fourth. Like, you can be different if you have somebody that – you always speak highly of Kyle Shanahan. If Kyle Shanahan goes Mac Jones at three in the face of a thousand Justin Fields truthers, mm -hmm. well, what, what are you supposed to do? Take the guy everybody says you should take, Chicago? No, no, no. 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 <laughs> That's a good jab right there. Absolutely not. If if Kyle Sandhan's taking Mac Jones, that then he is their guy. When you move up to number three and you're burning two extra first round picks and a third, mm -hmm. you are you are okay with at two outcomes. You are you, yeah. are you are okay with at least two guys because Trevor Lawrence is number one. At, at least we have the Jaguars not doing the well, I don't know who we're gonna take number one. Like yeah. Get, get out of here yeah. when teams do that. Crap. Gardner Minshew's our guy. Yeah. Like like the Cavs when they landed yes. the number one pick for LeBron James. <laughs> oh, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I just think more teams, you, you subject yourself to criticism when you don't go by consensus. When consensus happens and it doesn't work well, out, you get to look at everybody, all your friends, and say, well, everybody had them there. Well, I, I don't think it's just consensus because you're – they are also going off of not not just and I'm talking about the like the the big media mock drafter people. They're not just going off of uh, their scouting of these players. They're also they're plugged into teams, so they are trying to gleam and siphon as much information as they can, and then put players in draft positions based and, off of that. News and that's as well. what makes it really difficult to believe it could be Mac Jones because. Mac Jones fell to 12 in most mock drafts, and that's not to say he would get there, and if that's your guy, you go get him. But to, to trade three firsts and a third to get a guy who might have fallen to you really early seems... Uh, you well, know. And, and, and this is a draft with a lot of quarterbacks that might go in the first round, and a lot of teams competing for franchise quarterbacks. Right. So there could be a lot of movement, or would have been a lot of movement on draft day. Here's what... I, part two, okay? Part two of this news is... And I've read what Kyle Shanahan's saying, and you know Jimmy Garoppolo is is on this team. Ian Rappaport coming out saying he's the starter for 2021. I fully believe that. I believe okay. Jimmy Garoppolo will start and be their quarterback next year. So they're drafting Trey Lance. Ooh. Well, I don't. I I know you're saying that because <laughs> Mac Jones, you believe, is more I'm, starter ready. But right, and, but and this Trey is a Lance team is with a development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. I don't think it's. I don't think it has to be a developmental quarterback to sit a guy down for a year. You can do that with really good quarterbacks and have it end up the way you want it to. This team believes that last year with the injuries, it was an anomaly. They have a bunch of pieces back and they're ready to win. And integrating a brand new rookie quarterback does not equate to getting back to the Super Bowl. Agreed. I mean, it just doesn't. So for fantasy purposes, we're going to have to navigate this. We're going to have to look at Jimmy Garoppolo and say, okay, he's the devil we know in this offense and what it means for Debo and what it means for Ayuk and what it means for this offense. And that's a lot of times better than trying to project what a rookie might do if he comes in a week. Now, he might come in halfway through the year sure. if yeah. it's going wrong. Uh, it could remind you of the Alex Smith, Pat Mahomes situation where Alex Smith was – a uh, good dish quarterback. You yeah, know, they, they, Kansas City was good that year. Yeah, absolutely, and, and they played the whole year. They yeah, he played the whole year, and that wasn't because Patrick Mahomes was a developmental guy who sucks, yep. obviously. Um, but it was it worked out for everybody. All right, and then there was a follow up trade: the Miami Dolphins playing full on fantasy football. Oh man! And they received they traded the twelve they just had picked up, and they got the six, and uh, essentially. How do we break down what the Dolphins managed to do here? Do you have a good summary for us? Uh, I believe that it, what happened was, like, the, the overall is the Dolphins moved down three uh, picks from three to six and got a first-round pick to do so. And they weren't going to draft – they weren't going to draft a quarterback. So that this is an incredible move by so, the Miami organization. Yeah, they have the – they still have the first and third – in 2022 from the 49ers? Correct. And, and I mean, they're, they're set up. Miami, over the next couple of years, have multiple firsts yes. or seconds or thirds, like um, almost every single year for uh, the next three. On the, on the flip side, the Which Eagles... Which none of it will matter if they have the wrong quarterback. That is <laughs> true. Um, <laughs> on, the, on the flip side, the Eagles moving from 6 to 12, that says that they are not really looking at the quarterback market. They're not counting on right, it. Right, they're not counting on that. Um, so Jalen Hurts is a much higher odds, uh, to be the starting quarterback for 2021 without question. Yeah. There was some talk that they had interest, um, at six, but wasn't confident, weren't confident that a, a certain quarterback would drop there. Um, Lawrence. <laughs> like, well, I would take him yeah. if he, if he drops, we'll grab him. Uh, did we we haven't mentioned the T. Y. Hilton signing yet on the show? No, it was it was breaking news kind of later on the Thursday episode. Okay, so I just want to make sure we one year ten million dollar contract. Oh, it was breaking on the Thursday show. Mm -hmm. the The Ravens have signed Sammy Watkins, formerly of the Chiefs, to a one year five million dollar contract, which is good because the Ravens have been striking out on wide receivers. Some and might say they still did. <laughs> Oh, some might say that. Uh, and this is 
uh, we we talked about this a little bit in the office, but this is unfortunately a a symptom of you going all in on that offense. You want to be a complete run first team. You want to be a Lamar Jackson led offense, which can absolutely work. But these wide receivers get paid for production. I mean, you have. Uh, and it was like T.Y. Hilton offered more money to go to the Ravens. Who is the other wide receiver? I can't. Juju. Juju was offered more money to go to the Ravens. But they these, were courting Kenny Galladay and everybody. They they right. knew they needed a wide receiver, and everybody said. Eh. But these guys know that if you go to Baltimore, your numbers are going to go down, and then when it's time to negotiate your next contract, teams will say, "Okay, well, show me your numbers." And th this is. This is a, an issue that Baltimore is going to have to live with. That they, it's going to be difficult to court a an elite wide free agent wide receiver. You can draft them, but it, well, I, but wait, bringing them in is going to be tough. So they they managed to court one whose numbers couldn't go down. That is correct with Sammy Watkins. I that mean, five is. million dollars for a one year deal for Sammy Watkins screams of final contract. I'm sorry to say, it, it, maybe he he will be better for them but irrelevant for fantasy. Yeah. If you're irrelevant with Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid, you're probably irrelevant in the smallest uh, pie offense in he football. He made so much money in Kansas City. Yeah. I liked that he retweeted the uh, – remember the Jacksonville game? First game of the year last year. Oh, yeah. Three touchdowns? Yeah. Yes. And he looked he looked awesome. He retweeted that when somebody said <laughs> somebody tweeted Sammy Watkins is electric and it was that game. That's a, that's the most recent archive he had. He was electric in that game. It was game. awesome. The, what was that? Was that channeling a year's worth of electricity into one moment? I mean, I I don't know. We all saw it. Made me feel real dumb. Oh, dude, he for was, a game because he actually looked great. He made these cuts and mm -hmm. had the speed that was outstanding, and and then poof. But but he was unnecessary, right? Like completely unnecessary. Well, no, he was very necessary because then Tyreek Hill got injured, and it was Sammy Watkins. Oh, thank you. Then it was Sammy Watkins is going to be the the best pick in all of fantasy football. Because he's now the number one wide receiver for Kansas City, and it was just—I forgot about that. Then he was the worst pick. Oh, I, no, no one I, wanted to drop him. I had him, and it was like, do you trade Sammy Watkins? Was, well, first you play uh, him for a few weeks, then you decide can you trade him. To be fair, I played him week one, and it was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Demarcus Robinson, Chiefs re-sign him to a one-year deal. Leonard Fournette is re-signing with the Buccaneers. It's a one-year deal worth up to four million dollars. I was telling these guys before the show. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I don't know if you know this, Brooksy. It's hot. They are returning every offensive and defensive starter from their Super Bowl championship win. That is the first time a team has done that since 1977. So Absurd. They, they said, uh, this worked. Let's try again. Yeah, I mean, you've, you've got an uh, elder statesman in Brady and an old coach in Bruce Arians. And they're like, I don't care about future cap problems. We don't like change. <laughs> Just get everybody here. <laughs> Let us try to run this back again. Eventually when it stops working, we're going to bail and leave you with the bill. Yes. So the, the bucks are going to be bad here um, <laughs> in a couple of years, but in the meantime, this they is might, awesome for they them. Might get a couple but Bruce Super Arians, Bowls. Rob Gronkowski and Tom Brady will all be on a boat somewhere and they right. won't care at all. <laughs> Um, Jets signed Tevin Coleman, formerly of the 49ers, to a one-year contract. Coleman doing his best Sammy Watkins impression, transitioning to a franchise to finish his career. The, the Michael P. Ryan lives to see the draft. <sighs> I don't know if anybody lives. Everybody dies in, in New York. I, look, I'm just saying that what you would have – the Jets were in play. They still for, are. For, sure, if Aaron Jones no, had gone. That's, oh, no, I that's see. what I mean. They were in play in free agency to land one of the big guys or at least make a push. And they landed and, Tevin Coleman. And they got Tevin Coleman. Got it. I f I'm with you. I fully expect the Jets to to draft a day two uh, running back. But in the game of dynasty, man, you're this. it's all about taking those huge swings and see if they pay off. Matt Breida, one-year deal, formerly of the Dolphins, now with the Bills, staying in division. Bills were another team that 
we're getting links to some of these high profile running yeah, but, backs. But these don't matter when it comes to the draft. A lot of times people see news like this, Breida signs, Coleman signs, and they think, oh, well, the, maybe that means the Bills will not look at running back or, or the Jets won't look at running back in the draft. And the reality is what this says is they know they need running back and they don't know how the draft's going to happen yet. So uh, these guys are replaced. I think the Bills are are less likely today to draft a day two running back now with the addition of It's going to be a tough decision for them. With all, because they, Josh Allen's about to get paid, and you have passable, they a, a passable backfield. They they've spent a third round pick on a running back two years in a row. That's that's a lot of draft capital on the running back position. They got to go day one. Good point. Um, all right, <laughs> oh, don't don't do it, Buffalo. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be so sad. Free agency winners and losers coming right up. But first, I want to thank Harry's for supporting this podcast. Mike, too often we're choosing between quality and a fair price. Too often. And I won't stand for it, and neither will Harry's. Neither will I. You won't stand for it, and I. we will sit for it, but we will not stand. <laughs> Award-winning blades, factory direct prices, you know the story with Harry's. And for a limited time, Harry's is offering their starter set plus a free body wash for just $3 at harrys.com slash footballers. Will they let me pay more if I feel like that's insulting? No, they refuse. They refuse. Yeah. They will not. If I put in a higher denomination, they they say no, sir. Okay, three. You, <laughs> you say because they don't stand between right. those two choices. Three dollars. <laughs> uh, close, comfortable shave. Been using Harry's for years and years and years. Uh, they believe in quality so much that they control the whole manufacturing process. Bought their own factory in Germany, and um, whoa, didn't know this. Mastered the technique the technology to create a gothic arch, the gold standard for razor blade grinding. Ooh. I have not done that. They have. For a limited time, Harry's has an exclusive offer for listeners of our show. New customers get a Harry's starter set and a free body wash for just 3 bucks at harrys.com slash footballers. That's over $16 in value for 3 bucks. You get a five-blade razor weighted handle, foaming shave gel, a travel cover, and a travel size body wash. It's an incredibly great deal, but act fast as supplies will go quickly. Go to harrys.com slash footballers to redeem your offer. We're going to win. We're going to win! <laughs> Is that a shuffleboard uh, that showed up on that graphic? Oh, I did, did not you see it? I did not see it. Sorry. It was. Is Was that there last year when we did the show? It was. Okay. Well, it's new to me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't we didn't used to be able to see the graphics during the recording. That's true. <laughs> so they're all new to us yes. this year. Free agency winners and losers. It's been a busy few weeks in uh, NFL news, and we are breaking down who we think are the biggest winners and losers for fantasy football purposes, right? Yes. Uh, and that's, that's the focus for today's segment is who – Who's going to help your fantasy football team or hurt it? And who was uh, devastated by some of these moves? So, Jason, why don't you kick off our free agency winners section right now? So, uh, I've got one and a half guys here um, because I want to. One and a half? One and a half. That's, that's Mo Alley Cox. Are you a, <laughs> that's oh, right. It's Mo Alley Cox. I was going to go with a CBS sitcom joke, but I like the Mo no, Alley no, Cox no. joke better. No, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a shout out here to Brashad Perryman. Uh, because Brashad Perryman, it, it, look, uh, you remember the end of the season before last when Jameis Winston, uh, you know, was leading the Bucks, and all of a sudden last man standing was Brashad Perryman as Godwin and Mike Evans got injured. And all of a sudden Brashad Perryman was like, he, I think over that last month, he was the number one wide receiver. He was great. Obviously he went to a situation that was terrible, awful, horrific. And now he signs with the Detroit lions in a situation where he is, I think he's the one. I think he is the number one wide receiver for that team, and Jared Goff is... You're not in on Tyrell the Gazelle? I mean, Tyrell is... Um, he's always been a one-trick pony to me, um, and I think Brashad Perriman is better than Tyrell. They're, but it's those two guys right now, um, and Goff is an upgrade. You might, you might not like Goff in general, but he's an upgrade for Perriman. So he's one, but I think the biggest winner is actually someone I'm I'm rising on for fantasy purposes that I have been out on. Just oh. out. I don't like the player. You, you didn't put him in the dock because you wanted to surprise us with this. Yes. Is is Daniel Jones. 
Oh, baby! The more that I yes. think about it, I think Daniel Jones could be a good fantasy quarterback this season. Yes. They went out and they got Kenny Galladay, obviously. Um, they they got Kyle Rudolph, which is is helpful. Maybe. Uh, yeah, did that, did right. that go what, through? I, I believe it did, but there okay. was a bunch of weird stuff going on with the contract. But um, Kenny Galladay helps. You know, we saw this last year, obviously. Stephon Diggs goes to the Bills and, and really makes a difference for Josh Allen. Kenny Galladay was the best wide receiver on the market, and Daniel Jones gets him. And I think something that is being lost is we we talked about this a little bit, but Daniel Jones is a great mobile quarterback. He has yes. a high rushing total runs, usually. Yeah. But what happened last year was he got he got really injured and then uh, missed a game and then came back for one game and then missed a game and then uh, played a couple games. Up to week 12, he was on pace for 586 rushing yards. That's a good amount. That's great. And then after that injury, he was averaging six rushing yards a game. He didn't he was he was immobilized completely. So I think with his rushing baseline and Kenny Galladay, um, maybe Kyle Rudolph, I, I I think he's a big winner. I think that he is in a position where that assertion makes sense. But you have to believe either in you gotta be in or out on Daniel Jones. As a player, Kenny Galladay won't make you a better player if you don't, you know, if you're not able to take the next step. So, depending on what you believe about Daniel Jones, I think he can make you a better fantasy player, though. Sure, if he's the quarterback for the whole year. That's the, that there have been New York fans and people expecting change at quarterback to come sooner. Than, now, they'll give him this year. Yeah, so but, but you got to talk to Gettleman. Well, last year there were talks me. of making changes. <laughs> oh man, it's we haven't me. we haven't had Dave, Dave on the show. <laughs> what about the Perryman? <laughs> what about the Perryman piece there? Because I think they'll just draft. I think they're going to draft a superstar rookie <laughs> wide receiver. That's that will almost be assured. So sad for that rookie wide receiver. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. I, I I'll bet you're right. I mean, they have very few weapons there, but. I think this could be a team when you look at the transactions they've made um, that could be playing the longer rebuild game, um, in, in which case maybe they decide to try to deal with the trenches and, and up, upgrade yeah. the defense. Uh, so I don't think it's a lock that they take a superstar wide yeah, receiver. I don't either. I, I think it, it would, it's just me. But I for them to, to spend a high pick on a wide receiver right right now doesn't make sense. I think they'll do it. It, teams do stuff all the time that I think doesn't make sense. They want to win this year. <laughs> okay. They do. Oh. They 100% do. They should change divisions. No, man. They're in. <laughs> They're not winning Biting the Biting kneecaps. Um, Mike, who do you have as your biggest winner of the offseason? Well, so I, I kind of think about it in a, in a couple different ways where it, it, we've, we've talked about it. It wasn't the most active free agency period. To me, the, the biggest winner is Aaron Jones who gets paid a good amount of money and his situation doesn't change. He comes back. He's going to be incredible for fantasy. Well, it actually, his situation did change because he's still the starting running back for the Green Bay Packers with Aaron Rodgers, and now Jamal Williams is not there to take as much passing work away from him because A.J. Dillon, I don't think right now, I'm not going to project that A.J. Dillon will take away as much passing work or two-minute drills as Jamal Williams did to Aaron Jones, but – to talk about someone who actually moved teams, right? Ryan Fitzpatrick is not just the biggest fantasy winner. He's the, the biggest NFL winner. You had rumors of him. Per, maybe he's going to retire. He yeah, went, John Clayton bringing yeah, that hot news. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks Clayton. <laughs> <laughs> ah, uh, but <laughs> do you not remember the Oh yeah. I thought that one that no, was great. Yeah. Uh, but now he's, the, he, he should be the starting quarterback. He has to win the job. Wink, wink from uh, Taylor Heineke. But he's going to be the starting quarterback from, from a playoff team last year who has an elite defense. He's surrounded by great offensive weapons. Like Ryan Fitzpatrick could go to the playoffs this year. With, and yeah. if, if they don't, it's his fault completely. Probably. they were already in the playoffs. <laughs> Probably because they made the playoffs right. with a really bad quarterback play last year. So he would be my guy. I mean, you have, and that's trickle down, right? Is yes. that Terry McLaurin. That yes, is absolutely. Terry McLaurin ceiling changes, right? I mean, yes. you, you go from a player that, okay, locked and loaded wide receiver two, 
to hey, this guy if things went the right way could be a top ten. He could be a top receiver. ten wide receiver. One hundred percent, he can. You have so last year, uh, he was the wide receiver twenty one. He essentially had three terrible games. I'm talking about Terry McLaurin, uh, but three terrible games and four receiving touchdowns with terrible quarterback play still ended up as the wide receiver twenty one, and he was still very consistent for fantasy. But now you have Ryan Fitzmagic, who it. He's legendary for fantasy football purposes because he feeds his number one wide receiver, like Stevie Johnson, Andre Johnson, and Hopkins. Kendall Wright. Do you guys remember that Kendall Wright had a season with 139 targets? Wow. That was it, not not all of it was Fitz Magic, but it was mostly fueled by Ryan Fitzpatrick, br uh, Brandon Marshall. Marshall. Oh yeah. I was going to say this list is going to be long because he's had and, a lot of and different. I'll, and I'll end it with Devonte Parker. He single handedly sure. resurrected the bust career of first round pick Devontae Parker. So getting a an alpha true alpha wide receiver who can separate has incredible speed. Like Terry McLaurin is also a massive, massive winner. even with Curtis Samuel coming on board and, and uh Adam Humphreys, pronounced with an Humphreys. Yeah, no, I, I think Fitz Magic is kind of a standout in the winners category. Good for you, Ryan. I'm gonna I'm gonna echo kind of what we talked about earlier. Uh, it's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yep. For me, when you bring back every single piece uh, of your starting roster, crazy. And especially you know bringing back Godwin, it wasn't flashy for fantasy football news sake, right? He didn't get to go land in Philadelphia or some other destination that might have been more exciting for you know New York. But for Tom Brady, for Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. For this offense, you have the same head coach. You know what he's doing. You know what Brady can provide. Like, I think I think this is going to be a situation where you can just – it's like pausing time and just redeem another year of expectation. Brady's been doing that for a long time. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and it nice just feels is, that way. You know, a lot of times uh, teams, they don't know how to come back the next year after winning a Super Bowl and being the best, having the target on their back. But you're led by Tom Brady, who's like, this is just this is just what I do. So I think that's great. Um, they and think, do, of, think about what, what – real quick. Think about what quarterbacks do with Bruce Arians in year two. I mean, year one, sure. non-Tom Brady year one, even Brady to an extent. Oh, uh, yeah, he had it like the first 25% of the season. They struggle. They struggle immensely. High interception totals. They fall – like Carson Palmer's best season with Arizona – was year two coming into that. It was just a, a transformation. And the short offseason last year, right? Mm -hmm. We had this weird offseason. Brady managed to overcome all that and become a champion again. And um, he could end up being the most overlooked fantasy option at quarterback in the entire league. And you still have his decline hanging over him. But he could be overlooked for redraft league. He spent like the first four games of the season – and Bruce Arians was just driving the bus all over him. Yeah, that was all. I remember over and over and over where Bruce Arians was just like, "Got him." <laughs> I mean, he was he was not kind no. uh, to Tom Brady. But and you know, I will say this on the other side, driving he does the bustle. Uh, you let a, him make a bustle. It's joke a thorny and bus. You just let it go right through. He, no, he didn't let it go. He chuckled. It was it was it was good. I'll give uh, you you win you win today, Mike. Um, but they they might lose their best wide receiver because as of right now, Antonio Brown not. I was signed. I was going to ask. So you you say their best wide receiver? Oh, I mean the best wide receiver. Uh, so worst, yeah. So worst. I don't expect AB to be back. And you're calling the Tampa Bay uh, calling for them the winners. How are you valuing for dynasty, Tyler Johnson, who? If AB is gone, Tyler is going to come in and be the number three wide receiver uh, projection wise. Scotty Miller's still there, right? Yes. So I think Scotty Miller's still their number three. You think so? Yeah. Okay. I do like Tyler Johnson a lot. I think the team likes him. I just think that sometimes you can like a player and there can be no opportunity for him. And that might be the situation he's in. It might be the same thing as liking Gabriel Davis this year, but not seeing enough consistency from them to, to be valuable. And in Dynasty, you're talking about a quarterback change for Tyler. At some point, you know, it's like Brady's. Well, Jason, you saying, mean like second contract when he changes teams? <laughs> because Brady, Brady, I, I've, I've, ref, I've given up on the, on the ever believing Brady. Will, You've gone the complete. There is the, no end. There is no end. He'll retire at sixty-five. The beginning of the beginning, as you might say. 
All right, so I, I like Tampa. The, the backfield's going to be interesting to navigate with Fournette and Ronald Jones it's again. Gross. But you you are a one of those really famous people, Jason, the uh, Fournette dynasty mm -hmm. managers. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, congratulations. How would you feel about the – happy you went back? Uh, at the point that he went back, I was happy he went back. I had higher – hopes you know that the seattle would make a run or e even that the Buffalo. patriots or the so, some team would pay him a lot of money he kind of came back on the cheap uh which says to me it's going to be a lot of what we saw last year which is there's going to be ronald jones games there's going to be leonard fournette games it's going to be frustrating so my combo nation of uh david johnson and leonard fournette <laughs> not the best off season uh i'm going to we got to get to the losers, but I'm going to throw out some other names. Justin Herbert got the O-line improvement this offseason. Uh, Jared Cook added to the offense after losing Hunter Henry. Daniel Jones, you brought up. Cam Newton. Oh, huge. Look, I mean, it, yes. it is. They, they added pieces. I don't think the pieces they added are good at all, but I think they are much, much better than what they had last year. So it, it is arrow pointing up. Carson Wentz uh, getting a starting job. Going to Indianapolis, having an opportunity there. Aaron Jones, you talked about Chris Carson. Big winner. Uh, huge Big winner. Time. Yeah, I mean, if you were a dynasty manager of Chris Carson, you were shaking in your boots. And now yes, you, you, you were. get some uh, established uh, opportunity. Melvin Gordon with uh, Philip Lindsay gone. Melvin Gordon and a, a really, really good defense in Denver. Their, their offseason has been outstanding. I, I feel like Denver is... Top three, I think people think we hate on them. But that's Drew Locke specifically. Yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah, we I'll say, is Drew Locke still there? Denver's offseason has been outstanding. And if their defense is as good as it seems on paper with Vic Fangio, Melvin Gordon will be running the ball 35 times a game. And the, the, the Mike Boone signing is actually really good, I think, for Melvin Gordon in the sense that they're not – that might keep them away from looking at a, at a day two running back or adding someone significant in the draft. And then you had uh, Chase Edmonds with Kenyon Drake being moved and no additional running backs there yet. We'll see. Corey Davis, Curtis Samuel, Nelson Aguilar's agent. <laughs> I don't know if Dave – I feel like Davis and Samuel are neutral at best. I think they're both well, neutral think, moves. I don't know if I consider them winners other than money. Think, look, it, I was laying out those numbers of Curtis Samuel could be a massive winner playing with Ryan Fitzpatrick. Yeah, and, and – Of just being – and don't hear what I'm not saying, as Jason would say, of like, we're, uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick is not the greatest quarterback of all time. It's just his tendencies of over targeting his top options. I don't know if this Ryan Fitzpatrick and this defense is going to sustain three big time options in that offense between Gibson, Samuel, and McLaurin. I would, I would highly doubt that they put him in the position to do that with how good their defense is. Could be. I mean, you had the. The year in Houston where uh, Andre Johnson, Hopkins, and Aaron Foster were all doing work. Well, That's a fair it. comp, but not not quite the same defense. Uh, Curtis Samuel leaving is a big winner situation for Robbie Anderson yeah, and, and DJ Moore. Yep. All right, losers. Let me kick it off. Yeah, we all know. <laughs> Josh Jacobs, oh, man. one of the biggest losers of the offseason. And you know the truth is, is I think that situation is going to be an interesting one for fantasy players to navigate. Where does Josh Jacobs belong in a in a draft? But here's he's the biggest loser because the team said with this Kenyon Drake contract that you that we're closing the book on you being what mm -hmm. fantasy players believe that you were going to evolve into, which is you know more Derrick Henry, less shared backfield. Mm -hmm. Like this is the the next chapter for Josh Jacobs. Now I still think he has a chance to be undervalued in drafts because I don't know what Kenyon Drake's role will look like in this offense, but he's the biggest loser for fantasy football players for dynasty managers and just for the hopes and dreams that Josh Jacobs represented coming into this league. So for me, it, that that's where it starts and ends. Yeah, I mean, that combination, my biggest loser is, is the other side of that equation, which is Kenyon Drake. Because Kenyon Drake, say what you want about, like you just said, Josh Jacobs. Two losers, one team. Josh Jacobs could <laughs> oh, end up oh. being a value. Kenyon Drake is the backup here. 
Uh, and it, it'll be split. They're talking about playing him at wide receiver. Um, you know, he's he's not the veteran on the team in the system. He's uh, the new guy coming in. So I, I think Kenyon Drake goes from a situation where last year he was pretty consistent for fantasy, just got so much work that he, even if he was not very effective, he was fine. And he could have gone to a team where he was the, you know, go away starter. If, if he went to the Jets. Um, sure. He would have had a great opportunity, but he goes and signs with a team where he is now really a, a a change of pace back and gross. Yeah, I mean, it, it's really going to be – we'll do all of our projections. You know, this offseason will be in the UDK at ultimatedraftkit.com, and you'll see exactly what we stat out for these guys, and I am fairly certain Kenyon Drake's stat line is not going to impress. I, am, I mean, how many carries would you expect right now as the team stands for Kenyon Drake? For Kenyon Drake, like a hundred and I, I was literally going to say about a hundred and five. Yeah, I, I see in the one twenties, and that's just not going to get it done for fantasy. Yeah, and he may not even hit that. He may be just utilized in in more gadgetry, Could third be. down passing situations, draw plays. You know, real fun. And also, their offensive line got decimated in free yes. agency. Yes, it did by themselves. <laughs> Like they chose to do this. Yeah. Uh, Mike, your biggest loser of the free agency. I'm going period. with the, the uh, incumbents of the New York wide receiver core. Yes. Golden Tate is out, but he was only about 14% of the target share. Sterling Shepard. Meanwhile, last year he was 23. He had a 23% target share when he was playing Slayton, a 19% target share. You now have Kenny Galladay coming in with, What's his target share going to be? Twenty three percent at the lowest. Twenty five. Like you, you got paid to be that guy. So yeah, she, he's coming in. He is going to see targets. In that, then you have Saquon Barkley, who is back. Which back in twenty thousand or twenty thousand. Twenty thousand and nineteen. Uh, tw <laughs> keep that conversation going. <laughs> That's when you go when you switch from twenty nineteen to two thousand nineteen in the middle. That's what happened. You get twenty thousand nineteen, <laughs> which is which is still a ways off. Yeah, that's uh, but he saw uh, he had a fifteen percent target share in, in two thousand nineteen. So like Shepard maybe Shepard stays in the low twenties, but something has to give here. Like Darius Slayton, it's similar to uh people's love for Gabe Davis of it's uh, if you want to know what can go wrong with Daniel Jones, look at a 23% target share and a 19% target share for his top two targets. And both of those players were irrelevant nine times out of 10. Sure. That's the scary part about betting on Daniel Jones you, for Kenny like, Galladay. Like Jason pointed out, you had an injured Daniel Jones and you had some other players involved. Yeah. I mean, he has to make the leap without question. Yes. He has to go from a 3000 yard passer to a 4000 yard passer and, Saquon's going to help. I mean, mm -hmm. if you want to make excuses for Daniel Jones, they're there. I mean, the uh, new offensive coordinator last year got hurt and then lost Saquon. That is not a recipe for success. Stop fumbling yeah. and throw the ball to Kenny Galladay and let him fumble if he wants to. Just don't do it yourself. Other, not, not my fault. <laughs> other losers, maybe Lamar Jackson. I mean, all the big wide receivers said no thanks, as you said, um, except for Sammy. Yeah, I, I wouldn't call him a fantasy loser. He's he's still going to be. He doesn't solid. need to throw the ball, right? Yeah, it's not his not his thing. And then uh, is Jonathan Taylor a winner, loser, neutral with Marlon Mack, and then losing their me. left tackle? It it sucks to lose your left tackle, but Marlon Mack coming back with an Achilles injury, I'm going to bet against him. I've I've got a huge loser that I would like to now be Brian Ketron. More maybe on level with well, obviously. It's Devontae Parker. Devontae Parker is okay. a huge okay. free agency loser. Yes. One part losing Ryan Fitzpatrick from the offense and one part Will Fuller's arrival. Sure. And then the eventual one of these million draft picks going to another wide receiver. I mean, there's a chance that it's a Jamar Chase, it's a Devontae Smith, and then Will Fuller. And then Devontae Parker is sitting there going, you know, in his study at home with pictures of Ryan Fitzpatrick on the wall remembering the good times. He's the Wolverine I mean, meme. It's it, one of those things where... I think where Devontae Barker could be done if for fantasy. I'm, if I'm a quarterback and I drop back to, to throw the ball and I've got a guy who can catch a contested catch mm -hmm. in Devontae Parker or a guy that's open, <laughs> I'm going to throw to the one that is open 
and that's going to be Will Fuller. Yeah, and I think they'll add a big name too. So Chase Claypool, I would say that that is a uh, – having Juju come back with the amount of targets that Juju gets does not help Claypool. Certainly hurts the – you know the. but did he lose? I mean, he – he just didn't move up. You, he was a presumed winner right. because every, the, all the expectation no. was that Juju was going to leave, but nothing actually changed I, I, for I him. guess I see what you're saying. He, we all anticipated him being it in was, the winner column. It was a push. Yeah. Okay. Well, are you guys ready for our brand new Dynasty Download oh, segment? Oh, am I? We got new graphics for it, too. Woo! Dynasty Download. What? what? Good job on that one, Mike. What? That, hold on a minute. It's a little tamer than your usual drop. Yeah, yeah it's different. What is? What is this? Why are? Why have I been conspired against? Why did I work on a Sunday so that we could put that <laughs> into the I podcast? Work? Look, I have your real drop. I have your. Here's here's the truth. Now the graphic. Did you of, like the graphic? The graphic of Jay Grizz playing dueling banjos on a guitar for some reason. Uh, and then break dance. Well, look, yeah, <laughs> I, got, I got breaking news for you. That was actually me on the guitar. Oh. oh. Uh, I, I we, we knew that this segment was coming quick, and I didn't, uh, I'll be honest, I didn't expect you to work on a Sunday. And I knew we had it on Tuesday. So I, I am committed. I wasn't sure if, that you were going to have it in time, and I wanted to fill in the gap for you. So I grabbed my guitar, and I threw it up there, and I got it. I got it going. Dynasty download. It's almost as good as Mike's <laughs> usual ones. That forest in the background? I mean, it really pumps you up. You know? I thought it's this like... would be the official segment, but Mike, you did come through, and I'll hit the button now. Dynasty download. <laughs> the graphics are way better on yours, Andy. <laughs> what am I doing? Uh, you're, you're having a good time. Uh, <laughs> that, is, that is borderline not safe for work. All right, Dynasty download. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Make We're, sure to subscribe on YouTube. Show. We're going to be spending some time. We thought <laughs> we thought it'd be fun to surprise you, Mike. Oh, well, I've I've surprised by both. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh we want to spend some time talking about some Dynasty fantasy football topics. Some of these segments are going to be built around um Average draft position, movers, shakers, who's going up, who's going down in dynasty startup drafts. Some of them are going to be built around kind of, I guess, changing opinions on certain players. And so today we're going to talk about some of the second-year wide receivers. Three players, Henry Ruggs the third, Michael Pittman Jr., and LaVisca Chenault Jr. Last year, just to refresh your memory, their, their ADP, uh, Henry Ruggs was going off the board as the wide receiver 34. 78th overall. Michael Pittman was the wide receiver 40. And LaVisca Chenault, the wide receiver 50. Which makes complete sense. Uh, this year, as of right now, after their rookie campaigns, Henry Ruggs has dropped all the way from wide receiver 34 down to wide receiver 52, which is the 120th off the board overall. And then Pittman's gone up two spots from wide receiver 40 to wide receiver 38. Chenault has gone up the most. Wide receiver oh, 50. Man. To wide receiver thirty two. So he is going off the board six picks or six wide receivers ahead of Michael Pittman. I know he is my favorite between those two. But the rookie campaigns for these three wide receivers, um, I think in some ways, like Chenault's it, it was solid. Mm -hmm. Especially for a team that went and pursued the first pick in the draft. Yeah, Ch Chenault showed on the field that he is an NFL player, that he can uh, he can hang. and Most I, targets of the three, most receptions of the 358. Yeah, I, when, when I look at these three players, Ruggs is last for me. That, that part is easy. Mm -hmm. um, I still don't believe that Ruggs will turn into something special. He'll be uh, utilized. And, I mean, part of this is when, when he was coming in as a rookie last year, I saw him – fitting the mold of you know a a, a downfield fast uh a you Derek know. Carr special sure well mm, no <laughs> I just watched uh Kyle DeBoer Gogan posted um every deep shot for Henry Ruggs on the season I watched those and and Derek Carr missed him on on quite a few where he was open um 
but I just uh, for fantasy purposes, for fantasy purposes, I don't think he's going to be the type of player that I enjoy on my team where, okay, if I get a bomb touchdown, I'm happy. Otherwise, he pretty much let me down. What about this spot that he's going in, though, for this year in Dynasty Startups? I mean, wide receiver 52 off the board, a significant 18 wide receiver drop from last year. It's probably too low. That's what I'm I'm curious. Yeah. If it Mike, you would I'm I'm redemption can be had for, for yes. Henry Ruggs. It, it it can be had. I'm with Jason that of the three, Henry Ruggs is, is the is third on the list for guys I want for my fantasy team, but wide receiver fifty two feels like a in overcorrection on uh on the possible outcomes. He was he's still a first round pick. It, like you have to it's dynasty, right? Where Things that feel like they are a forever situation can change rapidly. When A.J. Brown was drafted to the Tennessee Titans, it was a death sentence for his fantasy value. That changed halfway through the season, and he immediately showed, oh, this is like a this is a top five dynasty wide receiver when you had no idea how to value him and you were scared to draft him. So things can change rapidly, even though it looks like they're locked in. For years, so wide receiver fifty-two for a player of Rugs' caliber and draft capital, I think is a little bit. You're, they're we're giving up too quick on Rugs now. Pittman is it's funny because you say things can change quickly. Things will probably change quickly for Pittman again because you come into this year. Last year it was very temporary. You knew Philip Rivers was not long for the mm -hmm. NFL. Now you have Carson Wentz. There's no guarantees that he's their future. Sure. You also have uh, T.Y. Hilton coming back on a one-year deal, so the imminent kind of ceiling for Pittman might not be, you know, he, he was 40 for 503-1 and one last year. Is this a player that you think has the potential to put up 75 receptions this season? I do. I, I do, personally. Pittman would be my, my number one of these three. Pittman, Chenault, then Ruggs. Uh, he... I, <laughs> With the what happened with T.Y. Hilton and the contract, if it's to me just trying to read the tea leaves. It feels like the Colts were okay if they had to move on from T.Y. Hilton. Yeah, yes, you would want him on your football team, but they played enough hardball to say, no, you can come back if you want. We'll take you, but we're we don't have to have you on this team. And the way that this coaching staff and Reich, uh, there was just like a, a recent comment about how he he feels like he got a like a steal in the draft getting Michael Pittman where they got him and he has the the uh, the physical skill set the size like Pittman to me can be a number one wide receiver and and if if Carson Wentz has anything left if Frank Wright can get Carson Wentz back to anything remotely close to good Carson Wentz then Michael Pittman is going to be a very solid wide receiver too I go Chenault Pittman rugs Mike, you go Pittman, Chenault, Ruggs. Jason? Uh, I lean Chenault first. I, I think from a dynasty outlook, you know, you, you talk about, well, if Carson Wentz can get better, who would I rather be the, the quarterback of my future wide receiver? I would much rather have Trevor Lawrence. Uh, he hasn't done it yet, but I think his future is brighter than Carson Wentz. Um, and, you know, when you combine that with DJ Chark's Contract situation. I, I think the future. Marvin could, Jones is there right now. Could too. very well be right. I mean, it, you know, you got to have wide receivers, and but he's older. I'm from a dynasty outlook. I think that you know, coming into 2022 and on, Lavisca could end up being a very, very highly sought after fantasy piece. One last question regarding these three. Would you trade any of them for an early second round rookie draft pick? No, no way. Not even Rux. No. Oh, uh, third pick maybe, of the second round. Maybe, maybe Rugs. I I feel like because I, would, I like a lot of the wide receivers coming out, and they they could quickly elevate over Rugs. I think I would. I think I would keep all three of these wide receivers. Ooh, look at you! Last Jason. pick of the first round. Last pick of the Dynasty first round? rookie draft. Sure, I would. I would trade rugs for. Hang on to the other two with that pick. I would. Okay. All right, we do have some rookie preview shows coming up next week, which is going to help uh, in your upcoming rookie drafts. And we have a Dynasty week in May after the NFL draft, an entire week dedicated to 
Dynasty. And if you're wanting to get into Dynasty and you don't know where to do it, we talked about the Foot Clan Leagues earlier, but you can go to footclanleagues.com and find people that want to start a Dynasty if you haven't played the, the format yet. It's a blast. And we have added support for Dynasty Leagues with the uh, UDK Plus and the Dynasty Pass that now comes with it. You get instant access to that at ultimatedraftkit.com. We want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting today's show. Saquon Barkley, a signed jersey right now is uh, the current auction price, 40 bucks at pristineauction.com. Ends Wednesday night. A Dak Prescott signed full-size helmet is right now $60. Ends Wednesday night. Nice. And there are hundreds of daily auctions. Pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS to get a $10 credit. guess we'll go with Mike's outro to the show today. I didn't record one. All right, Foot Clan, thanks for tuning in and listening. We'll be back with another episode this week. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.